evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the house of God tonight. Is everybody mind of the Lord? Say, if I've enjoyed the service thus far, I've enjoyed the singing. I tell you, God is good. Amen. Yeah. So it's good to be able to assemble ourselves tonight. And I want to thank you for coming. The services aren't the same when you're not here. We always need your prayers. We always want to keep praying one for another. And uh, well, I sure am glad that the Lord Jesus Christ completed the work of salvation. Amen. And uh, as, as they were singing so many times, that battle's raging in my heart is of my own making. But thank God it is finished. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just waiting on that trumpet to sound to call us home. Amen. We're going to book of 1 Peter chapter 4 this evening. 1 Peter chapter 4. Turn your Bibles. 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to be looking at verses 7 through 10. I'll go ahead and read verse 11 too. 1 Peter chapter 4. And you find that, say amen. amen. We'll start reading in verse 7. It says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, I want to thank you and praise you again for this beautiful Lord's Day. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to be here tonight, God, that you give us the health and the well-being to be here. I thank you for each one that's come tonight and ask you, Lord God, to bless each one in a special way. You know every need that we have. I thank you, God, for the service thus far, the, the singing, the testimonies. God, you're just so good to us. Thank you for your spirit. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. I pray, God, that you would, Lord, uh, guard my mind against the uh, work of the devil and guard my lips that everything that comes out of my mouth will be led of your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray this evening for the multitude of souls that's unsaved. God, they're all around us. We have them in our families, our neighborhoods. and Pray, God, that He, the Holy Spirit, would bring good old-fashioned conviction into their hearts. They'd see their need of Jesus Christ and be saved before it's eternally too late. I pray, God, tonight that you would encourage your children, help us to encourage one another. And God, again, if there's anything accomplished here today <clears throat> to glorify Jesus Christ, Lord, to you be all the glory and honor and the praise. I need your touch now. I can do nothing without you. In Jesus' name I pray and amen. amen. Now the verses leading up to this, you know, uh, I've got a note there in my Bible that says, Make the rest of time count. You know, time we don't, time is something that uh, we can't really put a hand on. But make the rest of time count. And down here in verse 7 it says, But the end of all things is at hand. Think about that just for a moment. The end of all things is at hand. Finn, how are you living with the end in view? Say, preacher, I'm young. The Bible says, but the end of all things is at hand. The brother and I were talking back there before service. Babe, with everything that's going on in the world today, over in the Middle East, babe, the good Lord Jesus Christ could very well come tonight. For you, not only that, you may go out by the way of the grave before this service ends. But you know, as saved people, now, when you start there in verse 7, we see here, verses 8 through 10, we see here, it, that's ministering to the saints. That's ministering to those of us who have been saved. You know, we've been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, with the end at hand, we don't have to be defeated. We don't have to go around. I, I, I know that we all agree that we're living in the last days, that uh, we see things waxing worse and worse, and uh, things are just seem to be out of hand. 
Praise God, as a child of God, we do not have to go around worrying ourselves to death, wondering what are we going to do next. Church, you don't have to worry about what you're going to do next. God's already got her pinned down. Amen. God's already got it in control. But we're going to look at these verses of Scripture here. Uh, you know, we're living a day and time we, we see so much confusion, and we know that Satan is the author of confusion. And unfortunately, sometimes that confusion gets in the church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But here again, you know, as we look at these verses of Scripture, here as we're living with the end in view, and if we really believe that the time is short, God tells you and I as saved people how to be living and conducting our life. Right. We're going to start right there in, in, in verse 7. You know, we can live a calm an ordered life. Do I always live a calm and ordered life? No, I do not. Sometimes I stress. Sometimes I become a little anxious. Not quite as bad since I retired, but every now and then I still find myself becoming anxious, becoming a little wearisome. But verse 7 says, But the end of all things that is at hand, be ye therefore sober. Be ye therefore sober. And what's that mean? Hey, we need to be sober-minded. We need to be clear-thinking. Now, I'm not going to go down this trail too far on this, but you know, uh, in the last several years, I have come across more professing Christians, Christians than ever in my Christian life who wants to try to convince me that it's all right for me to be a sipping saint. And I'm talking about Baptist churches. Okay? Now, here here again, you will not convince me until God shows me, and he's not going to, that hey, that it's okay for me to be a partaker of strong drink. Hey, not only hey, am I to be clear thinking, if I'm drinking or if I'm taking drugs, I'm not going to be clear thinking. And I say this, and, and then I'm going to move on. Then as we have our young people, as we're bringing them up, God forbid that I would ever teach a young person or an adult that it's okay for you to go ahead ahead and be a sipping saint. You go ahead and be a social drinker. I cannot guarantee you, you cannot guarantee me, if you take one drink that you'll not become a drunkard. But I can guarantee you this, if you never take that drink, then you will never become a drunkard. But now we'll move on. But here again, Christians, hallelujah, hey, we should be sober-minded. We should be clear-thinking. Hey, that's what that word, be you therefore sober, means. Why? Because the end of all things is at hand. Hey, we ought to be excited. Hey, we know the Lord Jesus Christ may come tonight. Hey, I know it's troubling as we look at what's going on, hey, as we see what's happening sometimes with the economy, sometimes what's happening around the world. But praise God, if you've been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, hey, the trumpet may sound tonight or you're going to be called out of this old world. You're going to receive a glorified body, a body like unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to be changed forevermore. So we can be sober minded and clear thinking. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. That word watch is a military term. Hey, it says to be on guard. Hey, we're to be on guard. And let me say this. We are to watch one for another. Amen. Hey, we are to watch. Hey, hey for the fiery darts of Satan. We are to watch for how Satan will try to get into my life, into your life, into this church there. Hey, we are to watch one for another and warn one another when we see the enemy approaching, when we see, hey, when we see the devil at work, we are to watch and be sober and praise God to look out after one another. Pray for me. You are, we are to be sound-minded, amen, leading an ordered and sober life. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 and verse 13. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. That's another message. But God has not given us the spirit of fear. Folks, how many times do you find yourself worried about something? How many times do you find yourself afraid? Hey, there's times in my life, hey, I see I have that fear. But God has not given us as his children, hey, the spirit of fear. He goes on to say, but of power. 
but of power. God has given you and I as his children a spirit of power. Hallelujah. We sing there's power in the blood. Hey, there's power in prayer. Praise God. Are we drawing from our power source? Church, continue to draw from Almighty God who is your power source and he will give you victory over the devil. He will, you give, he will give you victory over fear that the devil tries to put into your mind and into your life. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise God. It says in verse 13, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Jesus Christ. How do you know whether or not the words that you are hearing is sound or not? We preach it this morning. Get into the Word of God and see if it's sound words. If you can't find it in the Word of God, hallelujah, you don't need it. It's not sound. Back it up with Holy Scriptures. Back it up with what thus saith the Lord. I know this is 2019, but praise God, still allow the Word of God to be the final authority in your life, in your home, in your church. Praise God. Hey, why? Because God says, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Jesus Christ. So here again, we should be living a calm and ordered life. Hey, at church, I understand it can be very trying when you're searching for a pastor. Hey, it can be very trying as you're wondering who God has prepared to come here. And let me say this, God has the man prepared to come and to pastor this church. Pray for your pulpit committee. Pray for one for another. Watch one for another. Hey, hey, watch out one for another and be truthfully when you say, I've got your back. Sometimes as Christians, we'll say, I got your back, but we don't mean it. <laughs> Here again, we can live a calm and ordered life. Amen. We see also, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. There's that word watch again. That's that military term. Watch unto prayer. Be men and women, boys and girls of prayer. Don't let the devil rob you of a prayer life. Hey, a praying Christian is a strong Christian. A praying church is a strong church. If you stop praying, then you will be defeated. If you stop praying, you will be weakened and weakened and weakened. You'll no longer be watching for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. You'll no longer be watching out one for another. And you will find yourself wrapped up in fear because you have stopped communicating with your Heavenly Father. And we're all familiar with the Scriptures. We know we're exhorted to pray without ceasing. We know that God tells us that. But be men and women of prayer. I'm just going to stop here for a moment. Churches used to spend much more time in prayer. Prayer meetings used to be prayer meetings. Amen. Before we would have revivals, we would have prayer meetings. Amen. It's hard nowadays to get Christians to meet for prayer. You know, you have your Sunday morning crowd, you have your Sunday night, then Wednesday night you usually have the back, spiritual backbone of the church. Don't be offended. It's just a statement. But we have to be a praying people. I've heard it announced here before about how you meet early for prayer before services. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. You know, Charles Spurgeon, they, they asked him what was the secret of the success there. Hey, praise God. He said while they were having services downstairs in the basement of the church, underneath the pulpit, there was always a group of men praying the whole service. To say sometimes, you know, we, we, we would try to meet before service and uh, one or two people show up. What's really sad is when you, the deacons don't show up. I'm not saying that happens here. I don't know who the deacons are. But we're just saying the devil will try to get you and I to stop praying. And when we pray, we're to pray believing, trusting God to move and answer our prayers. Amen? Amen. Hey, I know you hey, I know you, you have probably have a prayer chain here. Hey, praise God for prayer chain. Thank God when something happens, somebody can call someone and say, I need prayer. And the prayer chain starts. And when you know you have somebody praying for you, that encourages you. Amen. I'm going to say this and then I'll move on. If you're on the prayer chain, and the call comes to pray about a need and you won't pray about it, you need to remove yourself from the prayer chain. Amen. 
But hey, men, women, brothers and sisters, hey, boys and girls, hey, stay in prayer. Amen. Don't stop praying. If we stop praying, hey, we're defeated. Amen. Here again, we see the faithful servant on watch. We see the faithful servant praying. Hey, praying one for another. We all need prayer every day. Amen. He goes on to say, but the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober, be sound-minded, be clear-minded, and watch unto prayer. Keep on praying. And above all things, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. We're to love one another fervently. That means with a heat. With the passion. Sometimes we'll take our vocabulary and we'll utilize a word so much that we lose the meaning of it. It's easy to say, I love you, brother. But is that fervent and is it coming from the heart? I love you, sister. We're living in a day and time because Christians aren't watching one for another, aren't staying in prayer, that more and more professing Christians are turning against one another. I am not your enemy. You are not my enemy. Hey, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're a part of the family of God. And God says, above all things, have a fervent charity one for another. But how many times have we seen it happen? Hey the, hey, the devil will get into a church and the devil will divide those brothers and sisters who had a, such a great love one for another that that church will be split right down the middle. And those who hugged and said, I love you, will go out of the doors of the church having animosity and hatred in their heart when God says, behold the end of all things of that hand have a fervent love or charity among yourselves Amen. our love one for another should be greater today than it's ever been in our Christian life but you know it's going to be impossible for me to have a fervent charity for you if my love for Jesus Christ is wax cold amen love one another fervently I just want to flip back there to chapter 1, verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. And you notice how many times we're going to use this word fervently here. Hey, an unfeigned love. Sometimes it's only lip service. Let's just be honest with ourselves and with God. Sometimes it's a lip service that comes from me when I tell God how much I love Him. And if, they, if it's just a lip service when I'm trying to tell God how much I love Him, what is it then to you when I'm telling you that I love you? We're talking about the end of all things is at hand. Church, this thing is winding up. Hey, the good Lord Jesus Christ may come tonight. We have families going to a devil's hell and so many times we pretend. We go through the formality of worshiping God when our heart's far from him. Hey, church, stay in prayer, watch and be sober and above all else have a great love one for another. Don't let the devil divide you. Don't let the devil... Hey, cause your love one for another begin to grow cold and that's not only for the folks sitting here now more than likely usually when a pastor leaves sometimes folks leave but that's also for those who have gone amen Y'all pray for me. Hey, go home tonight and read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Read the whole chapter 13. Hey, we're to, hey, we're to be loving above all things. Hey, our love is to be fervent. Hey, I'm going to read this over, over oh, y'all pray for me. Right back in James chapter 5. Hey, we've been talked about praying and now we're talking about loving. James chapter 5 and verse 16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. Effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We are to be 
fervently praying. We ought to be fervently, fervently loving one another. Hallelujah. Watching out one for another. Looking for the Lord Jesus Christ to come and watching for the works of the devil. And let me say this. If a brother and sister in Christ comes to you and they begin to share with you something they see the devil working it in your life, don't get mad at them. Thank God for a brother and sister who will mind the word of God and obey God to say, brother, it's because I love you that I've come to you. So, many, so much of the time, oh, hey, when I'm out of the will of God, I'm in the flesh. And when somebody will come to me in the spirit of love, hey, if, even though, hey, because I'm in the flesh, I'm going to get angry. <laughs> Until I allow the Holy Spirit of God to deal with me. Then I'll repent and thank that brother and sister for being honest with me. Amen. Y'all pray for me. You know, there's something about being fervent. Churches used to be, used to seem and appear to be so much more fervent when it came to worshiping God. I heard the brother say, don't forget your homework Wednesday night. Remembering about how God began to deal with you and how God, hey, when God drew you and God saved you. <laughs> Hallelujah! Don't ever let the devil take that from you. Y'all pray for me. We need your prayers always. Hey, back in the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. That means hypocrisy. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit serving the Lord. There's that word again. Fervent. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. That's not always easy to do. Amen. Takes grace. And let me say this, and I'm sure that's not a problem here. When whosoever will walks through the doors of this church, it doesn't make any difference whether it's male or female, Jew or Greek, African American, Caucasian, Russian, whatever. We are not to esteem ourselves higher than they are. There's no big eyes and little U's in the, in the eyes of God. There should be no big eyes and little U's in the house of God. And when we're loving one another fervently, there will not be big eyes and little U's. What we're talking about, preacher, we're talking about behold. The end of all things is at hand. Folks, somebody's stepping on, standing right on the threshold of eternity this evening. Hell will enlarge itself today. Y'all pray for me. We're trying to hurry. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. You know, sometimes you have to forbear me. You just have to put up with old Ron. That guy's crazy, but still God says, forbearing one another. Guess what? Sometimes others have to forbear you. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. What are we talking about? Behold, the end of all things is at hand. God says we're to love one another fervently and we're to forgive one another. We'll come back to this in a moment. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. I can't speak for you. I know where God's brought me from. 
And not only that, since I've been saved, I can't even begin to calculate what all Christ has forgiven me of. But we are to forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. There it is again. Put on charity. A love that finds a way to forgive. A love that's hot. A love that's fervent. A love that is without hypocrisy. Now back to 1 Peter. It says, Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. That doesn't mean we condone sin. That doesn't mean we accept sin. But we realize that I am a sinner. And you are a sinner. And as Christ has forgiven me, hallelujah, he's forgiven you. And we are to forgive one another. And brother, just, and I'm not picking on you, Brother Davis, but you're, I, I know you a little bit more than some of the folks. But praise God, we're to forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. And it, when you sin, and I see it, I still love you. Amen. You may be guilty of something, I'm not. We all have our battles. But we still sin and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. We're to have that great love one for another. Forgive one another. Amen. Now back in our text, verse 9, use hospitality one to another without grudging. Hospitality. That's another, that's another grace that doesn't appear to be as prevalent in the church today as it used to be. And I know that we all live busy lives, every one of us. When God was dealing with me about being saved, I used to worry. I used to be concerned. I used to worry about, well, if I get saved, what am I going to do with my free time? I live for the devil. Thank God when God saved me, he gave me a new family. He gave me brothers in Christ that took me under their wing. And they helped this old boy and they're still helping me today. They showed this old boy some hospitality. Folks, I, I never trout fished before I got saved. Some of the brethren in the church, they trout fished. They took me trout fishing. We would have a devotion and then we would fish. I didn't catch any trout for two years. <laughs> but I had Christian fellowship. And then one, one, one year for Christmas, my brother brought me an ultralight trout set. <laughs> But what we're saying, hospitality, be friendly. Yeah. Let's show hospitality one to another. Hey, even when my brother or sister is attacking me, I need to be hospitable. Yeah. I need to be friendly. I need to show them the love of Jesus Christ. That takes grace. The flesh wants to lash out. The, hey, the flesh wants to exact vengeance. But we are to be hospitable. Amen. Hey, Proverbs 18 and 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And then we always, amen, the last part, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Well, praise God, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Church, I've gone into some churches that weren't friendly at all. Thank God it doesn't happen here. But I, I mean, you go in, it's a cold shoulder. Like, what are you doing here? Especially if they didn't invite me, I just decided to visit. <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. We're members of the neighborhood come in. Some poor lost sinner coming to the house of God. Hey, be friendly to those sinners. Amen. Show them that you love them. Show them that you're glad that they're here. Show them that you care about them. Yeah. Amen. Uh, yeah. Surely we, we do that one for another. Use hospitality without grudging. Well, you know, old brother so-and-so's got this need, and I guess I better help him out. 
It shouldn't be that way. No. We ought to count it a blessing and praise God that we can help one another. Amen. You know, Christians today, we just do not fellowship like Christians used to. Like I said, I know we live busy lives. I know we're running to and fro on every hand. But we just don't fellowship the way we used to. I've probably said this before. The last cottage prayer meeting I remember being in was my aunt. She's home with the Lord, been home for a long time. And I, I, I'm not being mean. As a pastor, as you visit the shut-ins, and I know when people are sick, they don't feel up to a visit all the time. But you tell them, hey, brother or sis, you know, uh, if you'd like for us to come in, the deacons and I and some of the church, and have communion with you, just give us an invitation. Amen. Come in and have cottage prayer meetings. Yeah. Don't get the invitations. Very, very rarely anymore. But then you know what said? Well, they don't visit me. <laughs> Have you invited them to visit? <laughs> now we'll move on. <laughs> well, what are we talking about? Behold, the end of all things is at hand. Folks, this thing is winding up. God, hey, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. Amen. And the devil's going to do everything he can in his power to tear this church down. Back to our text. Verse 9 says, Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Verse 10, As every man hath received the gift. Friend, have you received the gift of God's grace? Say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Even so, minister the same one to another. Amen. As good stewards are the manifold grace of God. Sometimes as Christians when we speak of stewardship we automatically think of God's money. And we are to be good stewards of God's money. But what about being a good steward of the manifold grace of God? God shows this old boy grace every day. And where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Yeah. I can say that without, I, I know bro, without a shadow of a doubt, the grace of God has abounded in my life today. Mm -hmm. God tells me to show you the same grace. Yeah. I am to be a good steward of the manifold grace of God. Mm -hmm. That means more than just preaching, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Right. We are to continue to preach the grace of God as the only means of salvation. It is a free gift of God, but we are to show that grace one to another daily. What are we talking about? Behold, the end of all things is at hand. I ask this question. Behold, where is all the love gone amongst the brethren? Thank God it's still here. Amen. Amen. Don't let the devil steal it from you. Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. I'm going to read a very portion of Scripture, very familiar portion of Scripture. Matthew chapter 9, starting in verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Y'all had a meeting this morning about vacation Bible school. See, I pay attention. Hey, I've heard a minute here. Hey, if you've never done it and you want to do it, just meet with the folks. Church, a church never has too many laborers. Usually you'll have a handful that's doing all of the laboring. Pray. Hey, we're back to praying. 
The harvest true is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Folks, in these last days, hey, while well, we know, hey, but the end of all things is at hand, be busy in the Lord's work. Amen. I believe I've done said this. I, I was here once before. I, I've done said this. Let me say this to those of us that's growing elderly. Don't let the devil set you down. I don't want to look at people and point. Don't let the devil set you down and tell you you're too old. Amen. Praise God. Hey, you reach out to the younger Christians and you take them under your wing and you share with them your wisdom. Hey, they have the health, they have the fire, and praise God, they need your wisdom. When God's finished with you, he'll take you home. The devil wants you to sit down now. Well, I'm just getting too old. Let the young people do it. Well, praise God. When God moves on a young person's heart, encourage them. Amen. And when that young person makes a mistake, don't chew them out. Right. Right. Bull up one side and down the other. What do you think you're doing? Praise God. Remember when you were a young Christian? Amen. Take them under your wing and encourage them. Amen. We all make mistakes. We all come short. Yes. Amen. So what? But the end of all things is at hand. Be busy in the Lord's work. Amen. We're going to labor till the Lord comes. Amen. Amen. Or He takes us home. God's blessed you with a gift or gifts. Let's give those gifts back to God Amen. to glorify God. Amen. It's not about me. Right. It's not about you. Right. It's, all about, it's all about Him. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. But if I'm not careful, if I don't have that fervent love for God and a fervent love for you and I'm not watching and I'm not praying, it'll become about me. Yes. <laughs> It's my way or the highway. So many Christians do that. Don't get their way about something. Get in the flesh and go out and take others with them. Church, keep on glorifying Jesus Christ. Keep on working, hallelujah, till God calls you home. Yes, the end of all things is at hand. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ may come tonight. Hey, we don't know what tomorrow holds for this country. Amen. Things may get worse. They may get more than what we think we can stand, but God's grace is sufficient. But keep on keeping on for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And maintain a positive attitude. Well, how can I be positive, preacher? Because you're trusting God. Amen. You're trusting God. Friend, if you believe that the end of all things is at hand, keep giving yourself to God so that God will continue to use you in these last days. I'm going to ask you a question. We're getting ready to close. Friend, if your end will come right now, as you know it on this side of eternity, will you go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ? Or will you lift up your eyes in hell being in torment? The end of all things is at hand. What about you, Christian? Where are you in your Christian walk? Behold, but the end of all things is at hand. Are you giving yourself wholly to God in these last days? Allowing God to use your life for His glory and honor? Living with the end in view. Making the last days count. Are you making the last days count? Church, if we'll do these things, God will be able to continue to use us. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, I thank you for your word, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your grace. God, help me to be a 
good steward of the manifold grace of God. I ask your Lord to bless this church. Pray God you put a protective hedge about them. God that you would encourage them and Father they would truly be looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of, of their faith. God this is your invitation. You know the hearts. You know the need. May we be so submissive to your Holy Spirit now. In Jesus name I pray and amen.